Hi again folks, in this video we're going to talk about Kevin Adams. What kind of job he's done. I think he's done a terrific job. Just my opinion. Let's look at it coming up. Alright guys, I wanted to go into a few things about Kevin Adams. You know, but I wanted to mention a few things about him. And uh, before I get on these, these clips, a few clips I want to show you that kind of make sense to me. But you know, like looking, looking at the job he's done, now here, here, Kevin Adams came into a mess. Let's be honest here, really honest. How many guys could have hacked and done what he's done as a rookie general manager? Probably not many. And you got, let's face it, an owner in Pagula who's probably out of patience and he's sick of being under the radar of being the, guy, the bad guy, I'm sure, and he wants to get this team going. So in comes Kevin Adams, and what, what saved, me, saved Pagula with me is that Pagula made it clear this is the first time he's hired the general manager he wanted. Not other people telling him, get this guy, get this guy, get this guy. He wanted, he wanted Kevin Adams as the guy. He, he made that clear when he hired him. So Kevin Adams works his way up through the ranks uh, and the Sabres. You know, he paid his dues the right way, the way it should be done. And Kevin Adams comes in and his first job was, unfortunately, his first big job was having to trade Jack Eichel. I mean, this was, let's face it, I, I know he didn't have to trade him right away, but it was headed there. I think you knew, you know, right as soon as the offseason hit, you knew that was it. Uh, you know, he has to be traded in the first year Kevin Adams took over. He asked Kevin Adams to trade him. So I'm, I'm guessing, my guess is that Jack perceived there was weakness because it's a rookie general manager and probably figured that maybe that he'd panic and trade him easier than he did. You know, and <laughs> Adams, uh, I think, caught a lot of us by surprise just how hard he was in that deal. He didn't bend. Folks, we were losing. We were in a losing streak this year. You've seen it. We were losing before we traded Jack Eichel. We were having problems again. We needed to do something and he wouldn't bend. He wouldn't bend. And that to me is a real solid general manager mentality. He had a vision of what he wanted to get back and he wasn't going to bend on it. And he didn't even care when, when, when Jack was threatening to file a grievance. He didn't care because the grievance would have went on deaf ears, I believe anyway. It would have, he, he signed a contract. We have his rights. We, you know, you can cry and whine all you want, but when you sign a contract, you've signed a contract. And I know these players today think that that shouldn't be honored, but it should be. It really should be. At least to that extent, you know, that, hey, we're going to trade you, buddy, but shut up and we'll trade you when, when the trade's right for our team. We're not going to trade you because you're crying and whining. It's not happening. So I think the, the best thing we could have done, uh, not just with trading Jack Eichel, was the way we did it. Because it showed strength to our kids in our dressing room. It showed structure. And kids need structure, even professional hockey players. They need to feel, you know, when, when your child, when you're raising your kid and your kid wants to be punished, believe it or not, they want to be punished. They want, to, they want a consequence because they don't want to feel they can just be in the world alone. They want to feel sheltered and, and protected by their loved ones. And this is the same thing, I believe, guys, with professional athletes sometimes. Sometimes you have to protect them and show them a sign of strength and say, you know what? There's absolutely no way, no way that we're going to give in to this pressure. He's going to wait. We're going to trade him when the deal is right. And this way you guys are protected. We're protected. The franchise is protected. End of discussion. So let's take a look at some clips here I got on Kevin Adams. And we'll look at the first one, okay? These are the 16 drafts that he's done as our general manager. Here we go. And now it leads off, if you look at 2020, leads off by Jack Quinn, J.J. Paterka. And then in 2021 by Owen Power, Isaac Rosen. And then it goes on and on. But the thing, the thing that stands out for me, the thing that really stands out for me, okay, is out of these 16 guys, six of them are under contract already. And that is, for me, very impressive. We traded up to get J.J. Paterka, which turned out to be a smart move. Isaac Rosen, yeah, we didn't hear the end of it. Everybody just looks at where the player is at in the draft, and, and they discuss it from there. 
But right now, I'm going to show you in the next clip, if you sit tight, there you see it. Okay, there are the players under contract now. And that is the work of Kevin Adams. What you're looking at right there, minus Peyton Krebs, of course, okay? But the other six, okay, are all Kevin Adams draft picks. And Kevin Adams already has some of these guys under contract. So you look at Isaac Rosen, he's, he was signed. And I, did, I know I didn't do a video on this, guys, but I've done videos on these guys before anyway. So Isaac Rosen, he signed, which surprised me. It surprised me, actually. Jack Quinn, of course, is signed. Josh Bloom uh, just signed recently. Uh, Alexander Kisikov signed. Oliver Nadeau signed. And, of course, J.J. Paterka is already under contract as well. So these guys are all now under contract. These are future Buffalo Sabres. And you look at the names like Rosen, Krebs, Quinn, Bloom, Kisikov, Nadeau, Paterka. Yes, we can afford to trade Olofsson. Yes, we can. Do we want to? Probably not. You know? But if he holds out and he pulls a Nylander on us, like Nylander did to Toronto, we should move him. Don't do, don't do what they did and give in. Absolutely no. You move those guys out and you get rid of them. I don't think it'll come to that, though, for the record with Olofsson. I think Olofsson likes it here, and I think he's going to try to make it work. All right, let's look at the money part. Here we go. And if you look right there, that's another thing that he did. All right, we went from one of the highest paid teams in hockey to dead last. I mean, it's as simple as that, guys. I mean, look, we have 12 out of 23 on the roster, but we have $43 million in cap space available. That, for me, is as big as any draft pick what he did there with the money, the way he adjusted the money and didn't panic and start spending and trying to make the team. Because I guarantee we could have spent $20 million or $30 million more last year, guys, and still not had won more games. And let's look at the last clip. Here it is. And these are the tasks at hand. You say, well, why are you showing us that clip? Well, I'll tell you why, guys. There's a guy there named Ryan Johnson who has to be signed by August 15th of 2023 next summer. Then the summer after, we have Devin Levi and a little further down, Eric Portillo. Now those stand out. Those really stand out. Those three, what will he get done with those guys? Now the other guys, I can't tell you. I don't know. My guess is some of them will never sign. Some were just not good enough to get NHL contracts. But these other guys are, you know, like especially Devin Levi are really, really big concerns for Buffalo. But folks, we do have until August 15, 2024. I thought it would be less time. We have more time with Devin Levi to get that fixed. That's good, you know. And um, I th this is going to be the other big thing. Will Kevin Adams be able to do that? Will he be able to get those contracts done? So we're going to see with Ryan Johnson. That'll be the first one. We'll see what he does. Get him signed. And that way, if he wants to move, but get him signed. Get him signed to the entry level and move him then, whatever it is. But get him as an asset that you can trade out. And same thing with Devin Levi. We got to get Devin Levi signed without no doubt. <laughs> I won't even get into that. Uh, or Eric Portillo also. Get these guys signed because I am not sure, guys, about UPL. I just... I, yes, this is the year he has to come in and do something. If he doesn't do it this year, if, if, if UPL comes in this year and gets hurt again, we got to just be realistic and, 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 and cut our losses. I, I just don't see um, UPL being the guy. If, if he, let's say, gets hurt, or he, I, I, I'm more worried about him getting hurt than inconsistent. I like what I've seen of him in the NHL games he's played. I will say that much for him, you know. But I don't know, is he made of glass? I'm starting to wonder. I am. So yeah, when it comes to Kevin, uh, Kevin Adams so far, yeah, he gets a pass for sure. I think most of you would agree you're happy with him. I mean, 16 guys drafted, six of them are under contract of those 16. You're lucky, you're, you're really lucky to have that many. Believe me, you look at any other team, you'll see it's about the same ratio for the teams that are doing really well at the draft. Some guys, some players never play an NHL game. It's just the way it is. Some of them just fade away. And they, you know, they, they were drafted. 
A year later, they look worse than ever. I mean, this happens. This is the draft. This is, this is what happens. This is what happens. But then you find the guys like maybe an Ado that turn into like a, a potential Bergeron, you know? You don't know. You just don't know what you have sometimes till it develops and, you, and you've seen something years before it happened. You have to see what the player is. This is why, guys, I don't do mock drafts because it's stupid. <laughs> Sorry, but it is. It's fun. I'll do one. I'll do one like I'm going to do a top 10 before the draft for fun. But is there any way I really know? Can I really predict what somebody's going to be when he's 24? Come on. You know what I mean? Like this is why we, we always look back at the draft and the professional professionals of professionals get it wrong because the, the scouts they have and all the, 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 the analytics they have, and that doesn't mean squat. It doesn't. It's, one of, it's, one of, it's, it's what's in a player's heart. You know, if they're a champion, it comes out. And that's what you're looking for in the draft, I believe. You're looking for champions. You're not looking for the absolute gifted player every time because that can, that can really backfire, guys. It can. And I'm thinking along the lines, can you spot a champion ahead of time? A guy that hates to lose, really hates to lose. Those are the guys I'd really be looking for too, though, you know? And I think, um, I think we're, we're doing good with the draft under Adams. I just, I'm, I'm comfortable with Kevin Adams. More comfortable than I thought it would be a year later. Like, you know, last summer I was kind of not sure what was going to go down with Jack, but I felt bad for him too. I felt bad for this guy. It's like, come on, you know? It's not an easy task, what, what, this, what this man was up against coming into this mess. Having to win. Now, not only is he doing a great job, he has to, now he has to go on top of that and win the fan base back. So it's, it's one thing after another for, for this poor man, but he is doing his job. In my opinion, he's doing a great job. I'm going to leave it there. I know you guys will have your own opinion on it. I think he's doing a great job. All right, folks, that's it. I'm going to go check out the game. I might do another video. I might not. See you in that one if I do.